So this is being hit by direct sunlight. You can see my shadow right in front of the monitor here. And it is very easy to see what's happening on this OC monitor. A few weeks back, I published this video. It is winter in North Dakota and I'm outside in a t-shirt. Uh, it's 30 degrees, so it's really not that cold today. But as you can see, we got snow all over the place. But that's not the cool thing. Check this out. Here's an OC monitor that I'm able to view in daylight, even if I take this off. And I'm gonna show you just how badass it actually is. Check this out. I'm just gonna snap this off because it comes with little snaps. Pick that up later. But check this out. We're able to see the monitor in daylight. And if I turn it around, so now, as you can see, I'm backlit, right? The sun is right behind me. Now check this out. Tell me that's not impressive. So today we're going to dive deeper and see what this 1500 nit monitor has to offer. Shout out to OC for sponsoring this video. The OC LCM215 HDR Plus monitor is a high bright field monitor. And although the monitor's description calls it a field monitor, this high bright monitor fits into several studio and broadcast workflows that may actually keep it in the studio and out of the field. We'll talk more about that in a few. The LCM215 HDR Plus, which I should really call it a high bright badass monitor, has a 21.5 inch high bright display. That's 54.61 centimeters for those outside of the US. As of this video, this monitor is only sold in the US. And I've been told by OC that people outside of the US will eventually have access to this monitor also. For the time being though, you're just going to have to wait a bit. This is not a 4K display. It's an HD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And also, in just a moment, I'll tell you why this actually doesn't matter. One massive standout feature is how bright this display actually is. I was shocked, so shocked, that I made that little video that I released a few weeks back. And based off of how you all reacted to that video, obviously you guys were impressed too. Which is why today we're going to dive deeper into this LCM215 HDR+. The OC LCM215 HDR Plus has a max brightness of 1500 nits. This means you can view in direct sunlight even when you choose not to use the free included monitor hood. Let's do a quick rundown of the feature set of this monitor and then I'll dive a little deeper and then also share some of my thoughts and comparisons to other monitors. The display resolution is 1920 by 1080 so full HD. The OC LCM215 has a max brightness of 1500 nits. That is what allows us to use this monitor in direct sunlight without washing out the image. This monitor has two SDI inputs, one HDMI input, one video input, ideal for a broadcast studio environment, and one SDI output. OC took great care of us filmmakers because they have a kit that allows us to use V-mount batteries on this monitor. If you're one of those OG, ENG type of videographers, don't worry about it. They got you covered. They have a gold mount kit also. So one thing that I've noticed is that OC produces these monitors in batches. And what that really means to you is that if you need this type of tool on set or you want to add this piece of kit to your setup, you need to pull the trigger when they're in stock. And the last I checked, they had 22 of these badass monitors in stock. And yes, I'll make sure to link to where you can pick them up directly below the video right underneath the like button. My order shipped the same day it was placed, but OC tells me that it could take up to two business days after you place an order before the item actually ships. So I've been using this monitor for a while now, and all I can say is I am really glad I picked one up. Is it the perfect field monitor? Or is it the right field monitor for everyone? The truth is only you can answer that. For me personally, it checks off all the boxes that I needed to check off for the types of commercial and corporate productions that we work on daily. I'm going to compare it to at least two other brands that you have heard of later on in this video. And I'm going to show you how to save three to $500 on a custom Pelican case 
for this badass high bright monitor. The OC LCM215 HDR Plus sells for under $1,750 as of the recording of this video. If that price sounds like a lot of money, it is a lot of money, right? But consider this. The Atomo Sumo 19 HDR High Bright Monitor Recorder sells for $1,995. If you want or need the hood for the Sumo 19, and yes, trust me, you will need it because I own that monitor for a while, the hood will set you back an additional $245. And let's say you wanted to power that Sumo 19 using V-mount or Gold Mount batteries. Well, you need to buy extra accessories to make that work. The accessories are the core SWX kit for the appropriate, right? V-mount or Gold Mount. That kit will set you back an additional $151. And if you need a carrying case so you can take it on site when you're working in the field, you can choose to buy their kit that includes the carrying case. That kit sells for $2,279. But of course, the hood and the battery kit is not included in the $2,279 price. Let's talk about the new Atomos Neon option. The Atomos Neon 17-inch HDR monitor recorder accepts a 4K signal, but it can only display an HD signal, 1920 by 1080 That monitor sells for $3,499. You guys know that I use small HD monitors on my Komodos. I've been a small HD fan for years. Small HD field monitors are basically a 5 to 7 inch monitor that range in price from as little as $1,000, which gets you zero accessories, all the way up to $3,200 and more if you want wireless monitoring options. To get closer to what OC has done with the LCM215 HDR Plus, we need to level up to the small HD production monitors. Their production line starts at $3,500, and that's for a 13-inch monitor. The price goes up to $12,000 for a 22-inch version. They do happen to drop their price by a couple thousand during the holidays from time to time, so that number could be 10 grand if you're watching this video at the right time. The thing about Small HD is that everything adds up. You need accessories to make them work, and when you buy all the accessories that are needed to make them work, you end up spending 50% or even 100% more in accessories than what you paid for the monitor. In my opinion, the LCM215 HDR Plus is equally as capable as the much more expensive Small HD. And it easily, easily wipes the floor with any offering from Atomos. I have a strong problem with how loud the Atomos monitors are and the Sumo 19 is the biggest offender. In all fairness, I believe on December 23rd, 2021, Automos put out some sort of new app and firmware that allows you to control the fan speed. But the fact is that all of their monitors, regardless whether they're recorders or monitors only, the fans are simply too loud for a quiet set. Because I mentioned the added cost of the accessories to make small HD work, let's talk about what's included when you purchase the OC LCM215 HDR Plus. I'm going to cover the V-mount kit because that's the kit that I have, the kit that I needed. So if you're an ENG type, just know that the only real difference is going to be the battery plate. My kit includes the LCM215 HDR Plus monitor, a sun hood, a V-mount battery plate, a C-stand adapter, custom foam mold, and yes, this is important, and why you're going to end up saving hundreds of dollars. I'll explain shortly. Desktop stand feet, a power cable. If you want to accessorize your monitor, you have two options. OC sells a cheese plate so you can mount accessories. I used one I had laying around. And OC also sells a protective screen cover. So this is not a touch screen, so I'm not sure why you would need a screen protector. But if you're into screen protectors, it's there in case you want it. I should mention that this is the new upgraded version of the LCM215 HDR+, which makes it up to three times brighter than the previous generation. That's what makes the 1500 nit ultra bright panel usable when shooting outdoors in direct sunlight and what makes using the hood optional. From my own use case and testing, at peak sunshine times where I live, I haven't had the need to use the hood. Things you should know 
The LCM215 HDR Plus has two 3G SDI inputs. 3G SDI output is what we get out of cameras like the Arri Alexa Mini, for example. So the 3G SDI inputs are a great match for the types of productions that I work on. The LCM215 HDR Plus also has one video channel input with an SDI locking connector, ideal for broadcast and studio monitoring applications. There is one HDMI input so that you can use this with your mirrorless cameras or RED DSMC2 kits. And there is a single SDI output so that you can relay the signal back to another monitoring source like Video Village, for example. I found no issues sending my signal directly from my Komodo, my Canon R5, and my Fujifilm GFX 100S to this monitor. So I would say that OC knocked it out of the park, making sure that all the popular signal formats are supported. This might seem like a small feature, but I really appreciate it. The fact that I can pull the monitor out of the case, set it on the table, or mount it on a C-stand, and have it up and running in moments, and even send the signal back to Video Village or any other source, the speed and convenience of having a tool like this makes my life on set and in the studio easier, which allowed me to focus on my shoot, my story, rather than problem solving gear issues. Let's talk about the tool set this monitor is packing. Built in LUTs. The LCM215 HDR Plus has 30 SDR LUTs. SDR as in standard dynamic range. The 30 SDR 3D LUTs allow you to take the output from the camera's log signal, bring it into the monitor, and apply the appropriate LUT, which converts the low contrast, flat, unsaturated image into the Rec. 709 color space. If you're creating content for broadcast television, corporate client social media channels like TikTok, YouTube, and Reels, or internal training, and in some cases, commercial content intended for television, the final deliverable is Rec. 709, and that is why this is an important point. Also worth noting that when I compare the image and colors out of this monitor against the same image as it is being displayed on my Apple Pro XDR display in Rec. 709 mode, the color rendition and quality of the LCM215 HDR Plus is terrific. So you can use this as a Rec. 709 reference monitor if you choose to. The built-in SDR LUTs cover a wide variety of camera brands, including Canon, Sony, Fujifilm, Blackmagic, RED, and Arri. As this monitor's name implies, the LCM215 HDR Plus also offer 14 HDR 3D LUTs, converting the log signal to Rec. 2020 from cameras like Panasonic, Sony, Canon, RED, and Arri. For location work, that is a very nice feature to have available and use as needed. And like most modern tools these days, you can upload your own custom LUTs via USB so that you can monitor your way. I find this feature useful when I'm working on episodic series with a particular client over the course of multiple months. It helps me expose the exact same way, maintain my contrast, and essentially match shots even though they were taken months apart. All the exposure and monitoring tools that you would expect from a professional field monitor or production monitor are built in. So I'm not going to cover all of them in this video, but if you'd like to see a video on that specific topic, let me know in the comment. I am, however, going to talk about false color. False color is my absolute favorite way of exposing an image. The LCM215 HDR Plus in software has mapped out 17 different log curves to then display accurate false color from the camera source. The log curves include Sony S-Log3, Sony S-Log2, Canon C-Log2, Canon C-Log3, Panasonic V-Log, and my favorite, RED IPP2 wide gamut RGB and LOG 3G10. And there are several other Rec. 709 profiles also mapped out. So if you're using this monitor to judge exposure, you will need to ensure that you've adjusted your monitoring settings to match the signal that is coming out of your camera and into the monitor so that you can get accurate false color readings. I'm sure you can see OC has not taken any shortcuts when developing and putting out this piece of kit. Let's talk about limitations. The battery plate. If you leave your battery on the battery plate, even if you shut the monitor off, it will run down your battery. Although we have two inputs, we can only monitor one input at a time. In other words, we cannot do side-by-side -side monitoring 
of both input sources or even stack them up like we can on other systems. That is, unless we use an extra piece of kit like the decimator to make that happen. We also won't get cross conversion from SDI to HDMI because there is no HDMI output. On the other hand, if you want to also monitor sound levels, that tool is already built into this OC monitor. If you want to monitor timecode, that tool is also already built in. If you want a Pelican hard case to transport your monitor to and from, you don't need to spend $700 or more. Just buy the Pelican and use the custom foam inserts that this monitor ships with and place it in the Pelican. You get a custom industry standard carrying case for around $200. All the attention to detail where OC has taken the time to understand how people like you and I work on set and what we need makes me ask, is this the perfect high bright field monitor? Maybe not for everyone. It is for me. Links to everything that we talked about and discussed will be down in the description. Until next time, I'm Carlos and I will catch up with you guys later. Take care.